managing big data across our lifespan is critical for a strong healthcare system, as you're about to learn from Andrew Costa, who's using big data to transform healthcare for elders. Andrew, who holds the Schlegel Research Chair in Epidemiology and Aging, promotes the use of evidence-based care and policy in seniors and geriatric care. So please welcome Andrew. Thanks very much. So I'll start with uh, an easy question. Shout it out. What's Canada's favorite sport? Hockey. Of course, hockey. But how do we know it's hockey? It's simple. It's in the data. The data tell us that hockey has a higher ratings compared to other sports, that the sale of hockey-related merchandise is more lucrative compared to other sports, that my favorite junk foods, pizza, beer, chicken wings, coincides more often with when the game is playing. So it's simple. It's in the data. And our businesses, our politicians, and our media respond to this data by providing us what we want. It's in the data. Keep this in mind. We're aging. Our society is getting older. We live longer. Today, the average um, life expectancy is our early 80s. But in the 1950s, it was about our early, early 70s. So drastic change. We have more seniors in our population. Today, accounting for about 16% of all Canadians. But in less than 10 years, it'll be one in five, 20%. Some have described this as the geriatric tsunami, the gray tsunami, but really it's a complete misinterpretation of what we have. Really what's happening is, is that we have one of the greatest triumphs in human history happening right now. We've defeated a lot of disease, a lot of pestilence, a lot of environmental factors, and now we're at a point where we're all able to age, and most of us live well, well into our later years. On the flip side is our healthcare system. Older adults are major users of our healthcare system, accounting for about half of all hospital visits and the vast majority of care provided in the community. Yet our healthcare system was designed at a time when we didn't have many older adults, and so it wasn't designed with a lot of their unique needs in mind. Unique needs such as chronic conditions, frailty, and the need for often long-term informal care support, the kind of care we provide our parents and our grandparents. And so we see the consequences of this problem uh, all around us. In our healthcare institutions, for instance, at our hospitals, where we have long bed delays. In our community, where we have a strained home care system. And even in our families, where there's a lot of caregiver distress. We're stressed out about all the demands on us caring for our older adults. At the same time, we have big data. Every day in our healthcare system, literally mountains of data, well, not literally mountains of data, but mountains of data is collected. And it really happens as a byproduct of the regular functions of our healthcare system. Every time you go to your doctor, you get your prescription filled, anytime a nurse comes to your home to provide a service, data is laid out in its wake. And we can use that data to understand individuals' needs, interventions, costs, and outcomes. Taken together, we can use this data to understand the needs of our seniors better and use that information to provide better care at the point of care where it's needed most. We can also use this big data to understand what care is working in the community and in hospitals. So you can understand good care from bad care. My vision is a healthcare system that responds to the needs of older adults, its greatest user. Imagine if every time an older adult used a healthcare service, we could use that data to perfect the system for their needs. Imagine if we can take all of this data and discover what is the best models of care for seniors. That healthcare is really a living laboratory for us, where big data is the levers we use to understand it and also to move it in the right direction. I'll give you an example. Emergency departments. Emergency departments are a common access point for a lot of older adults in the healthcare system. They're using the emergency department at a faster rate today than they did previously. And by all accounts, that's increasing. This is happening at a time when all other age groups, younger age groups, are using less of the emergency department. And we know that a lot of these visits are potentially avoidable. Despite being users of the emergency department and big users of the emergency department, 
The outcomes for older adults that are in the emergency department are worse than younger adults. Higher rates of misdiagnosis, longer length of stay, higher readmissions. And so this is a big problem. How can we use big data? Well, this is one of my favorite quotes, I'm sure you've seen it. A good hockey player plays to where the puck is. A great hockey player plays to where the puck is going to be. Clearly, if our healthcare system is going to perform, we need to play to where the puck is going to be. In the case of emergency department visits, that means predicting emergency department visits before they happen. If we can prevent it, predict it, we can prevent it. We can manage it, we can understand it. And that's how big data can help us. Some time ago, I created um, a tool, taking all of the big data from home care in the entire province, all the data from emergency departments in the entire province, putting it together, a tool that predicted emergency department visits in home care. And that's the divert scale. Here it is. It's lovely, isn't it? It's like a weird Christmas tree on its side, right? Uh, there's no good way to show it, but it's actually very quite simple. What it is is an algorithm that describes all the different needs, chronic conditions, chronic symptoms, that are associated with high use of the emergency department in the future. And using it, you can distinguish groups of people that have high risk, those that have low risk, and all the different risk levels in between. And so this really exists as an algorithm behind electronic medical records to flag older adults that are high risk for ED visits. That way we can respond to them before they happen. And so together with the Hamilton Niagara Holland Brandt Community Care Access Center, that's the regional home care provider, if you're unaware, we tested the divert scale tied to interventions that were developed with the divert scale in Niagara region, specifically in St. Catharines. In some areas in St. Catharines, we use a divert scale and, the, and that specialized care that was developed, and in others, we didn't. And we used the big data from the region, from home care, from emergency departments, to understand what was the rate of ED visits between these two groups. And what we found is that over seven months, there was a 79% 79 decrease, 79 decrease in risk. And so not bad. Big data in action. But really, this is just the beginning. We have whole sectors of healthcare where we have no big data. It's all on paper. But this will change. And when it does, we'll have a fuller picture of the needs of older adults in our healthcare system, a better picture to design a better healthcare system for their needs. Also, we all have wearable technologies, or many of us do. It collects, I don't know, everything. Our steps, our mood, our heart rate. If we can find a way to share this data, we'll have more information in real time to be able to use it to improve healthcare for seniors. Real-time tools versus tools that we have now which are static. And so the future is rosy. I recently heard our Governor General say that the path between A and B is not generally a straight line. I think in this case, using big data to improve healthcare for seniors, it won't be a straight line. There's clearly going to be bumps in the roads, mistakes, successes, and perhaps unintended consequences. But really, it's all of our data. We're all contributing towards it. And the healthcare system belongs to all of us, so we're on this journey together. If we can perfect it, if we can actually work out a way to use big data to improve the care of seniors in a very big way, we won't just be solving our own problems, we'll be solving some of the problems of the world. And by solving the problems of the world, we can export our knowledge. And that's a very, very powerful thing. So I'll finish the way I started by asking a question and say, how can we improve care for seniors? It's simple. It's in the data. We just have to use it. Thanks very much.